weaknesses of Jason. I'm thinking, how do, who is this guy? How does he know about Jason? You know, what is with this Duke guy? Why, hello there YouTube and welcome back to 31 The Free Slashers. So we are on day 20 now and for that one I am reviewing Jason Goes to Hell The Final Friday. Um, directed by Mark Adam Marcus, starring John D. LeMay, uh, Kari uh, Keegan, Stephen Williams and Kane Hodder as Jason. So this is the ninth installment of the Nightmare on Elm Street, not Nightmare on Elm Street, the Friday the 13th franchise and this one, you know, Jason, you know, he, um, in this one, he is, you know, he, this time, Jason is done for. Jason gets real set, you know, at first, in the opening scene, we get this whole thing where a girl's planning, a girl's like going to stay at Camp Crystal Lake. She's getting everything ready for, to stay the night. Pretty much doing the whole cliche thing that we all know. And then Jason attacks from some unexplained resurrection after part eight, if this is actually following on from part eight. Well, I like to think that Jason is the, you know, Jason is part of the lake and that resurrects him no matter where he gets destroyed. Uh, so yeah, Jason you know comes in and he's chasing this girl till she turns out she's actually an agent and the whole like this military force or something gets jason and blows him up to pieces and he is defeated and then when the coroner's office take what's jason's remains him all blown up the coroner eats jason's heart and then jason jumps from body to body and the only way he can come back Fully is if he gets the body of someone from his bloodline, and he does have someone from his bloodline. He has a long lost sister that we never knew about till now, called Diane Kimball, who is, I'm assuming, Jason's half sister because Pamela Voorhees only had Jason apparently. So I'm assuming, also, she's got a different name, so maybe, I don't know. But yeah, uh, Jason has a family in this, he has a sister and a niece, and. Um, Jason wants to be reborn again and live and of course eventually he does that when his half-sister Diane is killed and some 
journalist guy thinks it's an idea to take her body back to the Voorhees household, where Jason then discovers her body after being a little, like, demonic creature, and then comes back and fully physically again, and then his niece, um, then, you know, kills Jason with a dagger, and apparently the only person who knows of this, that he can die from his own bloodline, is some mysterious guy who we've never seen before, called Duke. And, um, yeah, Jason comes back, and again he gets stabbed and killed, and then dragged to hell. But then, at the final shot, when Jason's mask comes out from under the sand, we think he's going to come out, but then we're so wrong when, when we see Freddy's arm with his bladed glove grab the hockey mask and drag it in and then that sets things in motion for Freddy vs Jason but of course it was about a 10 year wait before we actually got to see that and even then they both managed to slip another instalment in there okay so let's enough on the plot let's get to the likes and dislikes first of all I like Kane Hodder as Jason he was great in this for the amount of screen time he had in it, he was only in two sequences, the opening scene and the finale. He even has a cameo without the Jason gear on as a security guard outside the coroner's office. Yeah, Kane Hodder does actually have a cameo as a security guard, so I like that as well, a little easter egg there. Um, and yeah, I liked a few creative kills in this, there's like one kill where Freddy elbows a woman's bottom jaw into her face. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, my dislikes. First of all, <clears throat> I didn't like how Jason was only physically in this one for two sequences. The opening scene and the finale. Even though Kane Hodder had that much screen time as Jason, he made it count, I feel. Um, the look of Jason, I'm not a huge fan of. I'm thinking, what's with the mask? Has it gotten so tight it's embedded into his skip face? Um, but yeah... Kane Hodder was okay in this as Jason, but um, yeah, in this, the rest of the film, Jason kept jumping from body to body, possessing people, and would not stop until he gets the body of someone from his own bloodline and is fully restored. So I guess I didn't like how that Jason was physically not in this film for a, like, a majority of it. I didn't really like that. Also, this film didn't rub well with fans, so I don't think you... Know, also, the poster was a bit misleading. Like He never had the silver hockey mask on. Um, yeah, I just uh, thought... You know, this was actually the first one from New Line. I've already explained in the last review from Part 8 that Paramount was ashamed of Jason, even though he made them millions, and they sold the rights to Jason, not to Paramount. Uh, not Paramount, that's what I owned him before. New Line. New Line, of course, required the rights for Jason, but they didn't require the white rights for... The title of Friday the 13th, so that's why they call it Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday, even though its nickname for it is Friday the 13th Part 9. Um, yeah, this film was just a mess. I don't think it knew where it was going or what it was doing. You know, I just, you know, I just think this, you know, there was a, a little, you know, nod to Kane's first Jason debut with the sleeping bag kill, but yeah, this one, like I say, I didn't, I didn't like this one. In fact, this is my least favourite in the whole franchise. And, yeah, it could have been a lot better, but it wasn't. I did like the character of Duke. I feel like he had a lot more character development than all the others. And seemed to know the weaknesses of Jason. I'm thinking, how do, who is this guy? How does he know about Jason? You know, what is with this Duke guy? I mean, you know, he seems to be an expert in the whole Voorhees thing. And yet he's never appeared until now in the series. Um, you know, they could have done a bit more of giving a bit of an explanation to how Jason has a family and how they all still live in Crystal Lake. Um, also, I didn't like that they misspelt the Voorhees name on the mailbox of the Voorhees house. They spell it with one O when it's spelt with two O's. Oh, but one Easter egg I did actually like was when they were in the Voorhees house and they're looking around and they actually find the... At Necrocomicon Ex Mortis, which we all know from the Evil Dead franchise. So that was a nice Easter egg there. I did like that one. And it could explain why Jason was alive and how he came back to life, etc. with his mother. You know, whatever. You know, that's a theory there that 
Yeah, well that's a fan theory that Pam Lavoe he's used the Necrocomic on its most to bring Jason back, but that's just a fan theory, it's not true, or whatever, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if it is. Okay, so, um, yeah, I did like the final shot as well, where it set things in motion for Freddy vs. Jason, but like I said, there was a 10 year wait for that, and I feel that, you know, my patients did get rewarded with that, just, you know, I think a lot of people had high expectations, I don't know, but look, this film, it's not a brilliant film. This film's about 88 minutes long, or 90 minutes long for the uncut version. I've got the uncut version on DVD. Um, yeah, this film was a bit of a mess, you know, and it is my least favourite one in the series, and i got to say, this one I was a bit disappointed by, so... Yeah, I'm going to now get my ratings out, and for this, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give Jason Goes to Hell the final Friday, I'm going to have to give it a two. Two machetes out of five. You know, I wish I had more positive stuff to say on this, but like I say, this was a bit of a letdown, so yeah, two machetes out of five. But this is not the last one from Jason by far. No, we have a while to go yet. We have six, yeah, we have 11 more days to go with this 31. So, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Have you seen uh, Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday? Also, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe, but please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. No pressure, but like I say, it would mean a deal if you do. Uh, and if you're new here as well. Um, also, you can watch all of 31 on my channel so far. Um, so yeah, join me tomorrow for day 21 where I will be reviewing Wes Craven's new nightmare. So, until tomorrow, don't have nightmares.